morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the weekly insider number 22. Uh, happy Thursday and happy new year. Uh, this is this call is recorded and remember that it's being recorded and will be available on both uh, the Horizon podcast and our YouTube channel. Please remember to ask questions at at the end and we will have a menti code uh, while this call is happening. So let's get this kick started. So from the engineering department, uh, Luca and uh, Alberta are out of the office, but we have Albena here. And let me just summarize uh, very quickly what's been going on on the engineering side. So we made great progress with our new white paper, and it's uh, circulating for final peer review. And that process should be uh, going for about a month. And we're really excited to finally uh, bring this uh, to market and uh, to have it uh, publicized to our community. So uh, progress and in terms of the consensus and stake delegation is is uh, ongoing. And uh, we've assigned how we have identified how to design the delegation delegation transaction and how the delegated stake pool will be calculated, calculate its eligibility and provide proof if it's selected. And a lot of other details. So uh, it's it's good that we've made uh, some additional progress during the holiday season as well. And we've also been uh, doing um, modifications to the main chain that are required for the sidechain model. So that uh, effort is ongoing, and it, we've completed the final code review, the f- at least the first iteration of the code review. And that will continue in January. Also, the team in Milan has created a, a series of Python tests for for the code uh, uh, for the code testing, and that's going to be ongoing as well. Uh, the Milan team is also working. Engineering team is also working on the uh, updating the block explorers. So we've identified uh, performance uh, improvements that are going to be ongoing. And the next iteration will be to integrate the sidechain uh, functionality on there as well. Uh, regarding Sphere by Horizon, uh, we've also identified and mentioned this before, performance issues uh, due to the high usage of our app of uh, Sphere. So we've uh, identified these performance issues and are continuing to, to refine those. So those have been transitioned to the test team, to the UX team. So they've uh, uh, starting testing on those. And I mentioned this as well, but uh, for those that haven't uh, listened, we've uh, hired a new, a, n- a new person to our team. Uh, and this person is a cryptographer, a PhD faculty of mathematics at the University of Vienna. And he spent the last six years in the academic space uh, working uh, for the University of V. And he will be joining our team in February. His name is Ulrich, and we are really excited to have him along. And Al Bene, any, any additions that you'd like to make before we, we uh, pass this on from the engineering side? Uh, no, not really. I'd say you've been... Uh, uh succinct and and very clear thank you perfect perfect and with that being said um alan any any updates i don't see your mic on so i'm not sure if you can no i got pushed to talk on um yes just a quick update we're going to be reprioritizing all of our um, outstanding issues i got those down under a count of 50 or so which is pretty good um, we're looking at doing some another round of some optimizations to try to squeeze a little bit more out of these tracking servers. Since we're up to over 29, 30,000 secure nodes, um, so that's going to be the focus for this for this next iteration of the server build. And that's about it for right now. Thank you. Thanks for those updates, Alan. And now with uh, you, uh, UX. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. So we'll start with the help desk update brought by Spencer. Please, Spencer. Hey, look in the text um, channel and you'll see the actual details. Uh, the main thing that sticks out this week as 
from last week is the predominance of tickets related to the faucet. Well over 95% of the tickets were generated by the faucet. We had less than 2% of the tickets were generated for support of Sphere, and uh, we had almost 1% for, for Arism. So that's pretty much uh, reflective of the continued popularity of the faucet is generating a fair number of tickets uh, on the service desk for the faucet. So that's the, the snapshot from the faucet for today. Okay, thanks, Spencer. On our side, we've also been testing a new Sphere desktop build that improves the refresh performance. We continue developing the Horizon developer environment. That's an ongoing project. And we've been working since some uh, backend features for the faucet. And that's pretty much it on our side for now. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Gustavo, for that, for those updates. And let's see if we have uh, BD, anyone from BD? Any? Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, just a brief update from me today. So past week or so has been a great chance to kind of catch up on some of the less exciting things that we have to do. A lot of back of house tasks have pretty much taken up the majority of my time, but it's also been an awesome time for us to really sit down and set out what we're aiming to achieve in 2020. So that's been a big part of what I've been doing, and that's what I'll be rolling out to the rest of the BD team to make sure that we're all aligned and fully ready to go and rock it this year. Um, as always, everything we're doing is to try and reduce friction for everybody in the Horizon ecosystem in as many different areas as physically possible. And I'm excited to be talking about exactly what we're going to be doing in the following weeks. Uh, but that's pretty much it for me at the moment. Nothing massively specific. As always, I have to be a little bit of a secret squirrel. Uh, but if anyone else from BD wants to jump in with anything more specific they're working on, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. Wano speaking from Georgia. So I will update on the conference front where we are starting strong with conferences this year. And we have Alberto for the Blockchain UA conference this spring on March 20th, which is in Kiev, Ukraine. And uh, it is possibly one of the largest um, blockchain and crypto events of the Eastern Europe. And then I might get my feet in UK for the first time for the uh, worldwide known BET 2020 conference in London this January. And that's all from me. Great. Well, thank you for the updates, uh, Rowan and Vano. And for Academy and HDE, Jonas. Hey, everyone. Happy New Year's from my end as well. Um, <clears throat> so for the HDE, the current stage is that we're um, putting together the contribution policy, developer policy, and maintainer policy. Um, we're using bits and pieces that were formerly rather spread across um, our GitHub and uh, Confluence. So we want to consolidate all of that information to one place, make it easy to navigate. Um, the initial build is almost done. So the, the web design is mostly implemented. Now the functionality needs to be plugged in. Um, we'll also start developing the back end for the HDE um, over the next days. Uh, for the Academy, um, Linda did a really good job at catching up with all the infographics that were outstanding. So um, up to the current writing progress, um, graphics are set. Um, the first three chapters are done, and I'm considering to do maybe a... Or we should discuss this, but maybe roll out the first three chapters and then the rest later on. Um, and other than that... That would be it from my side. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, Jonas. And, and I do agree that we, we should be rolling out the content as, as it's available. So that's uh, great to hear that we have those uh, three chapters uh, completed. So fantastic job there. And uh, now for marketing. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to 2020. So I hope everyone had a uh, uh, great uh, 2019 and achieved um, great things, you know, build a solid foundation for what's coming in 2020, just like what we did. So we published our uh, Q4 report yesterday and uh, uh, revealed exciting growth in the last quarter. Uh, please take a look if you haven't yet. Uh, we also 
Uh, we will also be publishing an annual report very soon to conclude what we uh, accomplished uh, in 2019. So uh, please stay tuned for that. Uh, meanwhile, the most important task I'm working on this week is that we are setting our goals for 2020, uh, prior, uh, prioritizing our initiatives and um, uh, defining how we uh, will make adjustments. So one of the biggest uh, uh, tasks is to focus on uh, uh, crafting our vision statement. Uh, any goals or strategies we set for 2020 should uh, uh, actively contribute to uh, us achieving our vision in the long run. So uh, it's, it's a very um, uh, important task I'm working on. Um, and then uh, specifically uh, on the social media side, we are running a giveaway uh, with our exchange partner, uh, Change Now, uh, at the moment. So the total price pool is $100 in Zen. So and, uh, everyone, anyone can uh, uh, can participate. Uh, so uh, take a look, uh, and then also uh, Luca, along with the Milan office, is helping us uh, uh, do some uh, really informal and casual vlog uh, style videos. Uh, so it's, it will be very interesting content. Uh, the goal uh, for this is to show you know some vaccine actions of our core engineering team. Uh, so this will be really interesting. Stay tuned for that. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you. Jonathan, to you. Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Very good. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, January 2nd, and uh, we have completed three bonus referral days. Everything went well so far. What I've seen as a really positive response from the community. So really happy about that. I also wanted to highlight that we now have 45,570 45, Twitter followers, which is a huge difference from when we started in January of 2019. So uh, that's really exciting. And I think it's just the start. We're going to see massive, massive growth this year. Um, on the growth side, we're doing a couple things to try to, one, um, create better incentives for engaged users, and two, uh, try to, I guess, contain the cost of the faucet as the price of Zen uh, increases. So one of the things we're doing is switching the Zen reward to a USD set amount of reward rather than a set amount of Zen. So when we launched the faucet, Zen was around $4, and now it's probably over eight, which means the cost of the faucet has doubled. So that doesn't make sense. Really, it should be a set USD amount so that in our uh, profit and loss, we can take a look in our division and make sure that um, everything is accounted for. So uh, we'll be making that switch in the next uh, couple of weeks. Also, we're going to be uh, adding different types of authentication methods to the faucet, which include Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, I think even Amazon has one now. The reason is we want to move away from requiring only Gmail accounts. Um, we do that for security reasons, but there's other ways in which we can include people from around the world that don't have Gmail accounts. One of those ways is to authenticate using other services. So that's really exciting. And I think we're going to see massive growth once we open that up to non-Gmail accounts. Um, also, uh, we expect uh, more spam and bots as as we allow non-Gmail accounts. So we're also coming up with some precautions against that. First, we're trying to create a new incentive structure, which uh, Nathan and I were talking about yesterday, which really rewards people who have a lot of authentications. So for example, somebody who's authenticated Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, and has a Gmail account, is going to have more of a reward than someone who has zero authentications and uses a non-Gmail account. So that way, you're encouraging uh, positive actions and, in a way, deterring negative actions. So that's it on the faucet. Um, we're also starting to brainstorm the node referral system. So we're seeing how well the referral system is working in the faucet, and we're brainstorming ways to take that to try to increase uh, our 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 uh, uh, node hosters. So uh, we're just in the early stages of that, so I'll have more in the coming weeks. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Great. I, I love those updates and growth uh, growth plans. So that's been amazing. So now on the legal side, Dean. Thanks, Rosario. Happy New Year's, everyone. Jonathan, wow. 45,000 Twitter followers is incredible. Yeah, we got 2,000 over the weekend. 
It's incredible. Congratulations. Um, okay, so on the legal side, uh, I am organizing a board meeting for Zen Blockchain Foundation, making sure that all of our corporate uh, issues are, are, or T's and I's are, are crossed and dotted. Um, Michelle, I forwarded you an email regarding our resident agent. Just want to make sure you received it. If you didn't, reach out, let me know. Um, uh, Lucy, I am in the process of trademarking Unbounded by Design. There are no prior hits, so we should be fine there. Um, working with a few potential sidechain partners that I, I can't really um, discuss right now, kind of like Rowan um, in secret mode. Uh, and then lastly, and Jonathan, this is really for you. Um, so I, I happen to come across, I'm a, a lawyer, state of California lawyer, and every three years we need to do continuing legal education. Um, and of course, it's due on the 31st of this month, which means I've spent 25 hours listening to podcasts over uh, Christmas vacation. And one of the uh, lectures was on the difference between contest, sweepstakes, and lotteries. And this sort of ties into some earlier conversations we've had here on this call. Um, and, and Jonathan, I thought of you while I was listening to it. I saved all of the content and downloaded um, the lecture. So I'm going to forward that to you. And then you and I can talk about it and, and see if it connects with everything that you're currently doing and everything that you're thinking about. And that's it awesome. for me on the legal Thanks. side. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dean. I look forward to that. I feel like you just want me to spend 25 hours on podcast too, so you don't feel alone. <laughs> it's only an hour. Yours is only an hour. Well, good. Thanks for that. And now for uh, some leadership uh, thoughts, uh, Rolf. Anything to add? Thanks. Uh, I don't have anything to add. I'm excited about this year, um, but I don't have anything specific to add, so I'll... Uh, let the call continue. Perfect. And Rob. Thank you, Rosario. Okay. Happy New Year, everyone. This is um, going to be an amazing year for us. So um, love that the Horizon community has grown so much. And you guys, by fact of, or by virtue of listening to this podcast, clearly show that you care and you want to be engaged. Well, there's going to be a lot more for you to do in the coming year. Um, so again, just reiterating that crypto doesn't sleep, so neither do we. You know, we just had the new year yesterday, but the team is still powering forward, uh, operating in all divisions. And one of the biggest things that I cannot wait to release publicly is this new white paper that was already mentioned that Alberto and the team has been working on with IOHK. Uh, it's a huge leap forward. Um, so I don't want to get into too much of a spoiler, spoiler mode here. But it's a huge leap forward in sidechain technology. So our alpha version that you see, so the original sidechain white paper that we released is what we built this, the alpha version to. Um, and it's one that operates with, uh, you know, under the assumption of an honest majority of uh, certifiers uh, assumption. Now, the, the next great leap forward here is something that makes uh, our sidechain technology even more decentralized and secure. Um, yeah, via uh, a novel use of snarks. And I'll just stop there. Um, but what I will say is we are not just releasing a white paper here. This is actually what we've been building the beta to. Uh, so we've been uh, a little bit in hush mode on the engineering work that's been going into beta. Uh, but once the, this white paper is released, we can talk a little bit more about how we're actually or have been implementing it. Um, so you'll see uh, a fairly narrow window between release of this, this uh, basically a scientific paper and the implementation of it uh, in our beta. Uh, okay, so let's see, going beyond that, now we, we just wrapped up uh, 2019 and we're going to 2020. So check out the Q4 blog that Lucy mentioned. That's uh, a lot of progress in there. And... Um, we're about to, sorry guys, there's a bunch of noise going on in the background here, but uh, we're also going to be releasing an annual update of what we've been doing over the entire year. So we have quarterly blogs with updates, and then you'll see the annual update, and then we're going to be releasing what we're working on in 2020. So again, I have a whole bunch of notes about what I want to talk about and what we're going to be uh, scheduling into our delivery cycle for the coming year. 
But right now it's at the director level where directors are going into their divisions and seeing what they want to, what they think we should be committing to in terms of uh, definite things to commit to and then also reach goals. You know, if we have more resources uh, permitting or if we actually uh, deliver ahead of schedule, what else can we work on? So more about that. What I will focus on here, so starting the new year, is I am, we've gone through an internal, a slight internal reorganization. And this is all about making our operations more efficient. And we always talk about this. We're always doing this. You know, I, I think step number one is getting the right people in place. And we've built an amazing team over the last you know, year and, and beyond. So the, the team that we have now, I would say, hands down, is one of the most hot, highly qualified in the industry. But step two is constantly making the team itself more efficient at what we're doing. So we've just executed a bit of a reorg. And I'll, I'll walk through it quickly. But uh, basically, it's all designed with the community in mind. So we, we treat ourselves as a community startup. And everything that's structured is geared towards uh, either empowering the community, delivering tools and technologies for the community, and, or, you know, or engaging with the community or growing the community. So uh, the first division here, the, the big one, is the technology division. Nothing has really changed there. It's still run by Alberto and Rosario. That includes our engineering team. It includes our UX team, infrastructure, uh, a to-be-built product team. So right now we have an interim product team. Basically, we, we've pulled some engineers from the, the in-house Milan team. And we, we work as a, a matrix org with our UX team, our design team, and so forth. But what I want to ultimately do this next year is to beef that up into more of a, an in-house product team, dedicated product team. Um, because we need to be very aggressive with our product deliveries going forward. Uh, it, the technology team also includes project management, test QA, our support desk. Uh, HDE, our Horizon Developer Environment, is is under our technology team as well, because this is a very uh, a critical enabling element where we want to enable more open source uh, contributions into our code base. So we want to have dedicated resources in-house that do nothing but enable that type of community development. Uh, also, Academy falls under technology, especially as we're developing technical content uh, that falls under the technology team. The other big change here, and I've mentioned this uh, several times in these team calls, we have a dedicated growth division now because growing our community is such an important part about what we do. Jonathan has been promoted to director, and he's in charge of this team. It's also a composite team where uh, Gustavo's technology team on, on the UX side supports this. Uh, and we also have design support. So we, we have matrix support into it, but it's a dedicated team where they set their own growth priorities and we measure results. So the first project here that you hear often uh, is, is our faucet. But this was the first really test project of a whole series of other campaigns you're going to see throughout the year that all revolve around incentive programs. So it's all about using incentives to get Zen out there into the world and make it productive for people and amplify its usage. Uh, we're going to be focusing on merchants, focusing on new user acquisition within existing partnerships. Uh, and ultimately, all of our assets as an organization will be geared with growth in mind for how we're going to uh, basically get new users into our ecosystem and then funnel them through different elements of our ecosystem. Because we want people to ultimately come in as newbies and then, you know, end up uh, as Zen evangelists at, on the other end. Right. So that's that's the goal there. We have our, our marketing team run by Lucy. Lucy has been promoted to director. Uh, this is uh, still, um, you know, um, the usual marketing stuff. So we've got the brand, uh, brand management, brand cultivation. We've got our communications team. We've got our social media. We've got our content creation, meetups, ambassador program, and so forth. So I think anything that's really user facing and engaging with our users to try to get them increasingly involved in our ecosystem, uh, that's marketing for us. Uh, operations being run by Rowan and operations here is, is a composite organization of basically doing what he has been doing, but formalizing it. Um, so finance and accounting um, right now, Rowan is setting up. So he's basically uh, been a hero getting us through the, the financial crisis that we, we've been going through. It seems like we're constantly in and out of crises, but he's managed it amazingly. And I'd say one of the toughest guys in our org. So we put him in that position. But now the, the goal here is we want budgets to flow to the director level because we want to even decentralize them as an organization. You know, so we have this nonprofit company, but I want how we do business to be even more decentralized. So the, the goal here is to create a budget process with controls and then budget authority flowing through to directors. So that's on the very near term agenda there. And as we're emerging through, from the crisis, this is exactly how we're positioning our, our budget going forward. 
Ultimately, I, I want to have a human resources function uh, in-house because I want ZBF, the Zen Blockchain Foundation, to be an independent organization over time um, that even becomes independent of the treasury. So ultimately, we need to compete the treasury within our ecosystem and have other companies, other organizations, other dev groups uh, come into our ecosystem and be bidding for resources. So we want to have a standalone organization here. So we have to be lean, mean, and completely professional. So I want to have professional HR ultimately resource permitting. Um, Rowan's also in charge of our procurement process. So actually setting up a, a standardized process or a, a professional process, I should say, and how we manage our contracts, how we keep our, our contractors uh, on point. We keep them, uh, we hold them accountable to you know, contractual relationships. Um, he's a perfect guy to do that. And also managing what he has been doing, our strategic business development. So guys, th this is how we're organized now going into 2020. And like I said, we, we can hire the best people in the world uh, to run, run this project or to work on this project. But if we're not organized properly and we're not constantly improving how we do business, we're going to fall behind. And this is the most competitive industry in the world. So we want to constantly uh, get better. Okay, so what else do I want to say here? I, I don't want to have any spoilers, but uh, Lucy did mention uh, that we we have the directors now compiling our 2020 goals. We have some really big goals. Um, now, we want to have tractable goals, and we want to have reach goals. And there's a lot on the agenda. Uh, I probably don't want to spoil too much of that. Um, so I'll probably leave it at this, and it leaves a few minutes for questions, Q&A here at the end. So I'll stop there. Lucy, do we have any mentee questions that came through? Yes, we do, as always. So the first one is, uh, when will the Horizon 2020 pipeline will be released to the public? The 2020 tagline? Is that what you said? 2020 pipeline. Oh, pipeline. Oh, so basically our, our roadmap. So we're compiling that right now. I gave the directors uh, until this next Friday um, to come up with their, their own internal goals. And then we're going to take a week to deliberate this publicly, and then we'll announce it. Or, I mean, obviously through the public deliberation, it, it will be announced. So I would expect this uh, as early as not next Weekly Insider, but let me see the date there. So the Weekly Insider of the 16th, so middle of the month, I'd like to have our formal 2020 roadmap. So there aren't going to be, there will be some surprises and there will be some really important, uh, you know, maybe prioritizations on major projects. But some of the, the key things that we've been doing and talking about, you know, we, we don't want to be necessarily like, we, we don't want to be all over the place. We want to be consistent and constantly coming through on what we say we're, we're going to do. And we have a whole bunch of commitments from 2019 that we're just maturing. Things like uh, the sidechain system to beta and then to production. Um, and that's that's probably one of the most important technology projects. We're going to see a whole whole uh, list of other such things that you know, probably aren't too much of a surprise. But there are some really nice, uh, interesting ones that uh, we're going to be including there as well. Yeah, also just uh, uh, a reminder that we will have our first live stream of the year but, uh, at the end of the month. So uh, that will be, you know, we'll be also giving a very uh, complete picture of what's coming up. Okay, so the next question is, uh, is the faucet being marketed to Venezuelans in any sort of organized manner? Mm, I'll leave this to Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan. Hey, so uh, we don't have a specific campaign to target Venezuela uh, right now, but what we're doing is adding languages. So we did add Spanish recently. Um, as, so that would probably be most closely related to that question. Um, I would rely on our country leaders, uh, Angie and Ruben, to try to spread the word in uh, certain countries in Latin America. Yeah, just to um, add to the question, um, just going forward in 2020, we will have a more organized and systematic uh, uh, ways to uh, uh, promote all of our products, including asset, uh, into our regional areas, uh, you know, relying on our regional leads and then also uh, on social media marketing as well. So we will definitely uh, include Venezuela uh, in, the, uh, in the plan for sure, and along with the other regions as well. Okay, so the, uh, the next question is actually one, uh, two questions. One, uh, so one of the criticism of the node system is that it relies on DNS, which is a centralized attack factor. What are your thoughts of integrating the nodes and the wallets with IPFS, also IPFS sidechain? 
So we, we definitely acknowledge the fact that our, our node system is much more centralized than we'd like it to be, at least in terms of the, the tracking and, and payments of it. One of our big goals for really the last couple of years has been to build a decentralized system for it. Uh, I, I very much welcome you know, any and all ideas on how we can do this. Now, in terms of resource prioritization, we this, along with our treasury system, the two major elements to our ecosystem that we want to decentralize, I think is actually critical to our long-run health. Um, we've made critically dependent on our um, our sidechain technology. You know, our, our goal here was to actually put these systems on sidechains rather than integrating uh, that type of system into the main chain directly. Just from an architectural perspective, security perspective, it's just a, you know, a, a dominant model. Um, so that said, really, we've uh, pushed out these projects, you know, uh, in lieu of actually first focusing on that core technology. So, you know, how step one is delivering sidechains to production. Step two is actually getting, you know, um, this type of side ch- decentralized uh, side or node system operational. Uh, and then, you know, how we make it operational is the other question. So it's still TBD on how we're going to do that. Um, but, you know, more to come on it. And for sure, uh, suggestions definitely welcome. And let's see. So we had a question also on where where is money from the faucet coming from? Um, so uh, right now we have uh, a vo- voluntary contributions and the, um, the foundations also be contributing to the faucet. So it's a, right now it's been a mix. And we need to think long term how we're going to make this a sustainable project. So one of the goals that we have is we want all of these types of campaigns to be ultimately sustainable, um, but we're perfectly fine seeding them with in-house resources. And for sure, uh, we have members of our community that have been voluntarily contributing, and we for sure want to continue encouraging that. But you know, we're, we're, we're happy to seed projects like this, but ultimately long-term, we need to make sure, number one, are we getting a great ROI, a return on investment on it? Is, is it uh, performing the way we want? And then are there things that we can do that could make it sustainable as a standalone project? Any other questions, Lucy? Those are the top questions of the day. Thank you. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year again. It's going to be a pretty amazing 2020. We've got a lot in the pipeline, but of course, we're always holding out on you with uh, the actual roadmap, but it's going to be pretty cool. Thanks for joining.